Indeed, amen. Please be seated and open your hearts and minds once again in prayer as we ask God to bless this time. Let us pray. And so, Almighty God, we thank you for drawing us together as your people in this community. We thank you for your blessing, which demonstrates itself as we open our hearts and our minds now to this revealing word of yours. So open our hearts and minds, O God, so that we might be in connection with you and your Holy Spirit that reveals all truth to us. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ in whom we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this sermon series that we have shared together over these last few weeks, and today brings to a conclusion this sermon series called Life in the Church. And over the last few weeks, we have been challenged by those early followers of Jesus and how they impacted this sense of being community. Remember, when they first gathered, they weren't called the church. They were followers of Jesus. It's a a phrase in which we as 21st century folks reclaim for ourselves as we understand that church so often has disappointed us and let us down. And reclaiming for ourselves this sense of being followers of Jesus and what it really means to be a follower of Jesus. Here at Cathedral of Hope, we're not afraid to reject the dogmas of religion so long as we embrace the values of Jesus, to embrace those values that we see lived out in Jesus, to see those values that we see lived out in those early disciples and apostles and in those early followers. And in the bulk of the Christian scriptures beyond Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and into the letters and the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the story of those early followers and what it truly meant to be in community with one another. I believe that what we have learned over these last few weeks together is that church really is about building community. It's about dwelling together as sisters and brothers of Christ in the good times and in the struggles of life. To know that we are surrounding ourselves with people who are on the way with us. That does not mean that we all believe the same or live the same, but we are committed to living from that place of values, living from that place of love. I've said throughout this sermon series, if your religion teaches you to hate, it's time to get a new religion. That it truly is about embracing love within us and living from a place of love, living from a place of hope, living from a place of being in community. Those early disciples and followers of Jesus knew what it meant to share with one another. They also faced times of struggle in their persecution as those followers, but they knew that by coming together, they were stronger together, that they were building something which was in relationship with the God that they knew. And in our epistle reading this morning that came from the first letter of the Apostle Peter, we heard how this good news was spreading beyond just the Jewish nation and now into the Gentile community, the non-Jewish community. Peter is more concerned about what it means for Gentiles to believe than anybody else. And this letter, we understand, was written in his time when he was in Rome. And many of these letters of the epistles were really written to a non-Jewish audience. Many of the early writings were written to the Jewish audience, but many of these new letters were written to the new followers, the new believers, those who were once seen on the outside and who had now come into this relationship with God. And Peter concerns himself with these new believers so that they might also find the joy of their salvation, the joy and the hope of life itself. And today, as we come into this worship service and we think about life in the church, we're also called to be in joy in our service. Service to one another, service to the world, service in this community. And here at Cathedral of Hope, we have so many wonderful opportunities that we can be of service. I truly believe that when you are of service to someone else, when you are in service to the world, There is joy that lifts our bodies and our souls. I have discovered over and over again that when you focus on being of service, our lives get put into perspective. 
For when we find ourselves in a time of that great pity party, how many of us have had pity parties in our lives? That when we're in that moment of the pity party, that if we can transform that into being of service to someone else who is less fortunate than ourselves, our pity party doesn't feel so bad. There is joy in our service. And one of the great things that we get to do here at Cathedral of Hope is many acts of service. Just look at this service this morning. Look at the way in which people are being of service. You know, before worship, the pastors and the leaders of worship, they, they gather with many of the different groups that are being of service in this congregation this morning. And we remind one another over and over again that we've been called to be of service and to find joy in that service. There was great joy as I listened to that piece of special music this morning. And it lifted my soul and it lifted my spirit. From whatever might be going on in my life today, it lifted me to a place where I could see God face to face. There is great joy in service for our Elmos and for our altar service this morning. They don't just sign up because they're on a rotation. They sign up because they are called to be of service. And I don't know about you, but when I see the Elmos, I, I sorry, Lee, you're probably not going to like me for this, but, but when I see the, the, the altar servers up here during communion, they remind me of the yeoman of the guard. And they stand there and they guard what is happening in this communion service. Now, I don't know if yeoman of the guard actually translated into, into American. Perhaps it didn't because you're supposed to giggle a little bit more than that. <laughs> But, but they look like the, the beef eaters. Does that, does that compute a little bit better? That's gin? Okay, well, I'm just going to keep moving because obviously I'm going to dig myself a big grave here. Joy in service. I truly believe that when we are of service to one another, it lifts our joy and enables ourselves to see just what God has created in us. Now, I know that you know that I believe in the gospel according to Facebook. <laughs> and this week, just yesterday, I was watching Facebook like a hawk. And I had great joy as I watched what was happening yesterday here at breakfast at Cathedral of Hope. I don't know how many of you saw this post, but Mike uh, made a post of a young man who is a part of our breakfast yesterday, and he was stood there. It was just from his uh, shoulders down, and he had no shoes on. And Mike posted on Facebook yesterday that uh, there was this young man who had come into Bark, and he had no shoes, and he realized that he had more shoes than he needed. And so he took off his pair of shoes and he gave them to this young man and he had to walk, Mike had to walk out of here with no shoes on. There was great joy in his service. There is great joy in service as I watch J.W. and Charlotte week in and week out cutting hair of those who are less fortunate than themselves. And I see the joy as they sweep that hair up on a Sunday morning, on a Saturday morning, I should say. There is great joy in the service that you provide for those who are less fortunate and a haircut. I sometimes think that Breakfast at Cathedral of Hope is the place to be on a Saturday morning because there is another member of our orchestra who is a chiropractor and he has great joy in service as he works those, those homeless folks' backs as he helps them to get some realignment in their bodies, perhaps that they have struggled for that whole week and he lays their hands on them and he brings about healing. There is joy in that service. He didn't need to be here, but he shows up faithfully every Saturday morning. <laughs> joy in our service. Just before worship, Les was sharing with me that he was on the way to church this morning. And you know, if, we're, if you're on your way to church, you know there's a bit of a focus, especially for those of us who have to be here for a certain time. 
And he was on his way to church this morning, and as he was on that freeway, he saw somebody with their uh, hood up. We, we don't call it a hood in the UK, but he had his hood up. And so he pulled over and he stopped. And he said to the young man, he said, can I be of service? And the young man said, do you have jump leads? Well, I was shocked, Les, because you had jump leads in your trunk. <laughs> but more than that, he knew what they were for. He got, he got those jump leads out of the trunk of his car, and he, he put those jump leads on. I'm glad you know how to do that. And he started that young man's car, and they both realized that they were both on their way to church this morning because Les also had on his little badge that said, Altar Server. And they exchanged greetings with one another, and then they gave each other a hug as they passed and moved on in their own ways. There is joy in service. I could go on for the next 30 minutes about talking about the ways in which we are called to be of service, sisters and brothers, but help us to understand that what Peter was saying to the early church was that we are called to be of service. We're called to be servant leaders. Even those of us who serve as clergy in this congregation, we are called to be servant leaders. We're not called to be high and mighty. We are called to be servant leaders to demonstrate what it means to have a life of service and to be of service to one another, to generate acts of goodness and to lift each and every one of us to a place where we too can have joy, even at the times when we feel as if we have nothing left to give. It is that joy that Peter encouraged those early believers to have, that joy that surpasses all understanding, that peace that keeps our hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God. It is those gifts that God has provided each and every one of us to be of service to the other. And our service will look different depending on what gift we each have been given. Not one of us has to be alike but each and every one of us might, must find a place within our hearts and minds where we can be of service. You realize on a Saturday morning here at Cathedral of Hope, it's a busy place. But I know that Preston and many of the Flower Guild make these wonderful creations that we get to enjoy on a Sunday because they want to have joy in service and bring joy to this community. Let's thank our flower ministry. I sometimes think on a Monday morning I could just wear it as a hat. Erin <laughs> just said, and you do. <laughs> and then there is the young volunteer bill who comes in every week. Nobody else is in the building usually. And he comes in and he looks at the back of every pew and every chair. And he makes sure that everything is stocked and restocked and makes sure that it all lines up absolutely symmetrical. That's the gift he wants to offer. But he comes in because he has found joy in his service to this church. That's what life in the church is really all about, offering ourselves to be of service, whether we are getting accolades for it or whether we are just doing it quietly and silently. To know that what we do for one another comes from that place of love, comes from that place of Christ within, comes from that place where the Holy Spirit dwells in each and every one of us. Sisters and brothers, as we bring this sermon series to a close this morning with all of the complexities of what it means to be a church, with all of the places that we have come from and that we have arrived today, I pray that we might be reminded over and over again that there is joy in our service and that that joy is not happiness. Joy is more than happiness. Happiness is an emotion that will come and go depending on what happened to us in the day. 
Joy is a God-given gift that, that, that is in the very belly of our stomachs and that we can reach down into at any time and release. It's like the Holy Spirit that we can release at any time and find joy in our service for the joy that we have comes from our God and causes us always to find that joy in every season of life. As we honor and give thanks for the many ministries and programs and opportunities that we get to be of service this day, I pray that we might always do it from a place of joy. I'm reminded of that favorite scripture of mine that reminds me always that God loves a cheerful giver, one that is willing to be cheerful and joy-filled in their acts of service and in their acts of surrender. May we always find that place together on this journey of faith in this life in the church, for God will bless us abundantly when we come always from that place of sacred love. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope. Let us be the church that knows the joy of service. God bless you this day. Amen.